Well, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Kian Wilfred, the Regional Coordinator of CADOR. I want to take this time to welcome all candidates of 2021 to this presentation. I am doing this program live from the Socratic Conference Center and we are here to talk to you as you prepare yourselves for the national examinations uh, that is coming in the next one or two days, that is on Monday. I believe that each one of you will be sitting down writing a paper uh, precisely in English. This time I want to uh, encourage you to remain calm and be ready for that exam since you prepared all this time. We have journeyed with you all this time. We've been together the whole year and I believe that uh, this is the time to apply most of the things that we learned together all the methods, all the learning styles, all the revision methods will make sense at this particular moment. I believe that this is the time when most of you will be surprised, uh, when you will be uh, receiving questions that, uh, we are, that you have uh, already uh, mastered and revised during the Socratic conferences, because we say the Socratic method is always um, um, it, it cannot miss the point. Here, we are here today to uh, actually speak about the 12 hours of examination, the 12 hours of exam time. As we be begin this program, as we begin this exam program on Monday, I want you to consider every minute very, very important. Is since the way you are going to spend your time in the national, in the, as you do the examination, will matter. The, 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 if you are going to maximize your, your time well, use every minute and every second very well, then it means you are going to achieve the best. Remember that you are always in preparation, preparing for the next exam. After one exam, you will be preparing for another exam. And so we say preparation is the mother of all achievement. As we say, success is when opportunity meets preparedness. Now, I want to take this little short time to take you through the 12 hours of examination. In this program, I want us to focus on the things that you must follow, that you must do, that you must honor for you to achieve excellence in this exam. Now we focus on the 12 hours of examination and we are looking at each hour and the first hour here is the hour of prayer. I'm calling it the hour of prayer. I believe that uh, we will all wake up on Sunday morning and uh, I would ask you to even wake up earlier. I'm not asking you to really get out of the bed, but I'm saying your last hour as you sleep, please just spend a few minutes to pray and you ask God to, to help you as you get out of your bed. You get out as you go to prepare for that exam. So this first hour, we are talking about the hour of prayer, and we mean during the examination, prayers are very important. You have been praying all this time, but this time I want you to pray, dedicate your prayer to the exam, and ask God to guide you, because this exam will go a long way in, in opening doors for success in your life. You are going to ask God to guide you. And the most important part of message in that prayer is, please help me, God, to remember everything I have learned ever since. Now, this will, will, be, will be taking place many times during the day as you communicate with God. We are saying that the most important uh, uh, person in your life, the most important being in your life is God because he's the one who understands you and who knows you. Now, this before an exam, after exam, and during the day, you must spend some minutes praying. And so when I talk about the hour of prayer, I don't mean you spend one hour praying. I mean, you will now take time. Every, every other, every, every, all the, every time you complete maybe a, 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 a course or maybe an, an exam, you are doing your studies, you are doing uh, maybe revision programs, Please be in continuous communication with your God. That is what we mean. The next one is the second hour. That is the hour of silence. There is, we say there is power in silence. And I want to advise each student, as you prepare yourself now, spend a lot of time with yourself. We say the most precious time, the most valuable of all times, are the times that you spend alone and speak to yourself.
And we said during this exam, please have a lot of time to speak to yourself, talk to yourself, tell yourself a lot of things. Tell yourself, promise yourself many things, uh, interrogate yourself, ask yourself questions. And as you do this, then you are doing this silently. We say that when you are silent, that is the time when you can be so honest to yourself. The only person you can be really honest to is yourself. So for the students, all candidates, as you prepare your exam, I want you to understand that silence is key. Spend a lot of time to remain silent. Even during the exam, we want you to remain silent. Even during revision programs, we want you to, re to remain silent. Even during personal study, as you study in class, Please remain silent, silent, so that you can give others an opportunity also to revise. Noise making, remember that noise making uh, contributes to failure in, in exams and, and also makes other people who are around you also to fail because they don't have time to concentrate. Students, I want to tell you this time you need to really focus on more on yourself more than other people. This is the time to remain silent, and there is what you call the power of silence. That is it. Then, the, in the third hour, I'm calling the hour of following instructions. So I call it the, the hour of following instructions. This is when you are supposed to really follow instructions keenly. You listen to someone. You follow direction. You follow rules. We say that uh, if you are not following anything, then surely any road can lead you to any place and if you're not following anyone you it means you have no you have no mentor if you're not following rules then it means um you will have no one to to blame when you fail so here we're talking about follow instructions follow instructions uh, instructions you've been given all this time by your, by your teachers, by your mentors, uh, instructions which you, be, you have been given by the examiner, by the, by the, uh, in, I mean the teachers, uh, instructions you have been given during the exam itself, even in the paper that you are going to receive, you'll re realize that there are instructions on top of that paper. There are also other instructions that you are given in every question. Every question has instructions. When you are asked a question, it's an instruction in, in itself. So I want all, you, all of you students to make sure that you follow instructions more than ever. If there is any time you need to follow instructions, it's now. We have learned that 30% uh, of students fail, not because they have not mastered content, but because they lack uh, the skills. Actually, they don't follow instructions. They fail to follow instructions, and they fail in the areas they have mastered. If you fail in 30% of the areas you have mastered, then it means definitely you are going to fail terribly. So what I want you students to do is to really follow instructions. You, you follow them religiously. The next one here is the hour of, uh, the hour of to, the word reading to master content. Many times I've seen students just reading. They only read. It's just reading, just reading, just reading, just reading. Reading like they are reading just a magazine. You need to change the way you are reading at this particular moment as you uh, begin their exams. I want you to read focusing on mastery of content. Reading is communication between yourself and the author of the book you are reading. Remember that there should be communication. Remember that you should be asking yourself questions along the way. Remember that as you, as you continue reading, you must interrogate yourself. Just reading without asking yourself questions, whether you have understood or not, whether you are mastering content or not, is not worth reading or doing that kind of a thing. So I want you to really focus on mastering content as you read. Ask yourself, how much have I mastered? Uh, as I spend like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, uh, you, you are going to, you must be able to uh, ask yourself questions and answer those questions along the way. We have talked many times, I am reminding you about the Socratic method, the power of the 50 minutes, where you need to take the first 30 minutes to study, to master content. The 10 remaining minutes is meditation. Uh, I mean, the, the, the 10 minutes and the five minutes you spend in uh, perusing the work and revising it, and the last five minutes you set the questions and you set Socratic card. I'm just reminding you that. So that is when you will uh, uh, now harvest the fruits of your reading. You will now get the, the results. 
you will now be a result oriented student. So the next one here is the fifth hour, the hour of meditation. There should be many times during the day that you meditate as a student, as, as you do the exam, as you finish an exam, as you complete maybe answering a question, or as you complete reading a question, there should be some times to meditate. There must be certain short minutes, brief minutes of meditation every time as you study a paper or maybe as you study and also during when you, I mean the time when you are answering questions when you read a question you have to meditate give yourself time to meditate a, a bit so that you get you understand the question well meditation has been proven to be powerful even by the inventors those people who have invented uh, um, the, the inventors like the th like people like Thomas Edison uh, great leaders like Mahatma Gandhi, uh, people like Mother Teresa, uh, Charles Darwin, and so many other people, the great men and women, they have told us that there is power in meditation. When you meditate, you will realize that you give yourself a chance to think and bring in the best out of you. So we say, when you meditate, when you think about the, you focus on what you are doing, and you forget about everything else that is, that is not important at that particular moment, you will come up with a solution even if you are facing a serious problem. So we are saying even when the question is difficult and is proving to be, to, be, to, be, to be hard, then students, the best thing for you is to meditate and give yourself time to speak to yourself. And that is when you will realize that surely there is power in meditation. Now, the second one, the third one here is the, 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 the sixth hour, the hour of asking questions. This is very important. I believe that you know this. This is very important. We have, say, we have said many times that when you ask questions, you solve problems. The only way you can ask, you can solve problems, you can solve your problem, is to ask yourself questions, ask other people questions. When you raise your hand in class, we've said many times that when you raise your hand, you are doing two things. You are praying and asking God to help you because God is up. We believe so. And number two, we are saying that when you raise your hand, you are telling the teacher, I have a problem. And when you ask a friend a question, actually you are asking that friend to solve a problem that you have. And so asking questions is power in itself. In fact, it is enough to say, and it's valid to say, those students who ask questions most of the time and, and just spend 80% of the time asking questions will do well in the exam. They will do very well in the exam. So the students who ask these questions most of the time will be able to, to participate in the national exam and they will be able to do very well in that kind of exam. So asking questions. We have said many times that um, the students who ask most of the questions most of the time will soon outsmart most of the students who answer most of the questions most of the time. We have said the students who ask most of the questions most of the time will soon outsmart most of the students who answer most of the questions most of the time. That is to say there is power in asking questions and when you ask questions definitely you can Come, you come up with something new from your mind, you think, you are able to think, you are able to be creative. But when you answer a question, when you answer a question, then you are, uh, you are only bringing what is in your head, in your mind. So here we are saying, ask questions. This time of examination is time to ask other people questions. Use your Socratic card as much as possible. Use all the questions in your Socratic book. Ask questions. Ask your friends. Ask the teachers. Ask even the questions that you understand. The, the, the questions which, whose answers you have. Because when you ask those questions, you get a chance to even answer them well, and you help someone else. Remember that we are all a team in our class, and we are when we help someone else to do well, you are helping yourself. Because when you do well as a class and your school mean grade goes up, you will be happy to celebrate the results at the end of the year. So we are talking about 
the, the time for examination is the time of questions and answers. The time of ex examination is the time of meeting people and asking them questions. I know you don't have teachers right now in school because maybe they have gone home, uh, maybe you don't have the principal and maybe the deputy principal in school, but uh, you still have your friends. You have your friends who are with you and you can ask them as many questions as possible. And I would say when you are taking meals, when you are, um, when you are um, 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 relaxing outside there, please take time to ask each other questions. The seventh hour. In the seventh hour is the hour of presentation. If there is any time you need to present a lot, of pro a lot of topics, so many topics. This is the time to do more presentation than ever. This is the time to present, to do more Socratic conferences. Now that the school is silent, the Form 3s and Form, form 2s and Form 1s are not there, Form 4s, this is the time to do the presentation. This is the time to, do, to, to present chemistry, mathematics, Kiswahili. This is the time to speak content that you have mastered ever since. I'm just giving you this because you may not have another opportunity to present chemistry. Some of you, it will be your last time to do chemistry, by the way. Some of you, it will be, it will be unfortunately, some of us, it will be their last time to do uh, uh, scientific mathematics. I know you will forever do math because you will be buying things, you will be doing, you will, some of you will own businesses, but scientifically, it could be the, the last time for some of us to be, to be doing real math. So, if there is any time you need to give yourself a chance to, to present, present mathematics, present chemistry. For those who are not interested in Kiswahili, and you feel that this is your last time to study Kiswahili, you are just praying that maybe let me do and forget about this Kiswahili that is giving me a headache. Please present it this time so that you get the best out of you. And you say, it's my last one. I want to do it in my best way. Now, present Socratic conferences. For the, for the Kador member schools, remember that we are talking about the, the conferences. The conferences are very important. In fact, this is the, the time to apply the Pareto principle, the 20-80% rule. It's very important. So presentation is the time. This is the time to do the presentation. If I were, if I were you, if I were to speak on your behalf, I would just say there is no reading anymore. Students must do presentation and listen to one another. Maybe you can give yourself 20 minutes of study, 30 minutes, I mean 30, I mean 20% 20, 20 of your time to study, or 30% of your time to study as a class, but 80% of your time is presentations. When you do this, you will be surprised with the kind of results that you will receive. Then we talk about the eighth hour now. The eighth hour is the hour of writing well. Remember that during the exam, um, you are supposed to write. I have said many times that uh, exam is, is, is a, test that's a test that finds out whether you succeeded in moving information from the textbook to your head. Examination is a test that finds out whether you succeeded in moving information from, your, from the textbook or to the, from the minds of the teachers or from the resource center to your head. If that is the case, then how can we as examiners know that you have mastered this content. There is no other way. We only want you to write, to write well. So when you write well, you show us that you understand. When you write well, this is the only way we can know. Remember that as candidates, you are doing a KCSE, that is the Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education program, which we can only test you through writing. You have no opportunity to present yourself by word of mouth. So. That is, that, is, that is how it is, and you cannot change it. The only time, you, the only way you can now show is by writing. Maybe an opportunity will come in the university when you can speak your mind, and we can give you marks for oral presentation. But this time, there is, there is no time for oral presentation. This is only writing. And so I'm asking you, write well. First of all, when I say write well, I want you to use the best handwriting. When you are writing your exam, please use the best handwriting. Do as much as you can to separate your letters. You have letter by letter so that it is clear. Remember that the examiners will be checking on, on your work and, and sometimes there are human beings who may not tolerate dirty work. Some of them may just give you uh, less marks because of your 
bad handwriting. So please make sure that you write well. Writing well means writing with passion, writing with a lot of uh, interest, interest, have the desire to write, uh, write with a lot of, a lot of uh, seriousness because this is the only time, I'm, as I'm telling you, this is the only time you are writing, uh, you are pre presenting yourself before the examiners so that they can give you the grade to move to the next level. Now, write well. When you're writing the composition, write well. When you're writing math, calculating mathematics, please write well. When you are writing, answering questions in chemistry and all these areas, please remember to write well. That is the, every time you are doing the exam. The writing well hours are spent in the, in the exam room writing. This is the hours. These are the hours when you are seated writing. Most of the time during the exam you are writing. You are thinking and writing. Thinking and writing. So please make sure that you write well. The ninth hour is the hour of revision. It's the hour of revision. We have said it's the hour to revise. Use all the revision methods you have been given. We've shared with you many, many ways to revise. We've grouped you, we've, given, we've, we've put you in groups and we gave you the appropriate uh, revision methods and st learning styles and study methods for in every group. And I want you to remember those days when we discussed those uh, kind of uh, ideas and kind of uh, those, those, those methods. And I, this time I want you to revise. Revise with your friends, discuss with your friends, go through the, go through the pages, go through the, the, the revision books, go through the papers, and you realize that most of the questions that you will revise are the very questions that will come in the national exam. That is the ninth hour. In the tenth hour, that is the hour of play. This time, I want you to play as much as you can. After the exam, go and release the, the kind of um, uh, bringing new energy by, by playing. This is when you go to the field and play with friends, interact with friends, play football, netball, move around, maybe go around the field so that you can re-energize yourself. After, after that, you go back and take a shower, and when you do that, you make your mind fresh. You refresh yourself. That is the only way. You can never, you can never succeed in studying all the whole day I mean, doing an exam, going to study, going for revision, going for a presentation, and then, then and you sleep, and then the next day again, you are doing another paper. It can't work. So I want all of you students, as you are in school, have a good program for games. Discuss with your games, games, games uh, representative uh, to really uh, organize good, 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 good uh, games. I would even advise the principals in our schools to make sure that you do you organize and you have a good plan where learners can participate in an organized kind of play. After every exam, students should be given a chance to play together so that those who are not good in play in games can get an opportunity to, revert, to, meet, to, 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 to play with others. Remember that there are students who are not just naturally gifted in playing football or maybe certain types of games. And maybe in the school there are only two types of games uh, whereby students uh, really, 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 really are interested. So I would advise you teachers or principals to really organize a plan well so that your students can participate in an, a kind of organized games. We could go for team building every day, why not? We can go for a program that encourages everyone to play when we team build in the evening, when we go for fun, kind of activities in the evening, then that will help our students to play together so that no one is left behind when it comes to playing. Otherwise, you will have some people who will not play, whose role will only is to avoid the others, and it's not actually healthy for people, for students, to watch others during this time because you also need time to really refresh. That is the time, the, the, the tenth hour. And we have the eleventh hour, very important, the hour of eating the hour of eating. And uh, this time, I want you to take time to eat. Eat pole pole. Just take your time to eat, um, to go and study, and you need to eat so that for you to be able to, uh, to, to, to do well in the next part. We are talking about the hour of um, rest and sleep. That is the last hour. That is the last hour, the 12th hour. The 12th hour is the hour of rest and sleep. Rest as much as you can. You must be able to go to bed and forget about everything else. This time, I am asking students not to 
uh, get stressed about the exam that you did, maybe during the day, and maybe you, you are not sure whether you, you will succeed or you will, I mean, you, are, you, have, you have done very well. This time, I want you to take rest. Take rest during the day, just relax your mind, and then in the evening, you sleep and you forget about everything else. In the morning, you wake up when you are fresh and you get back to business. So this should be this time, and I will want to advise everyone, uh, and, and even the, the students who are in charge of the dorms, please make sure that everyone sleeps comfortably. There should be no noise in the, in the, uh, in the dorms. Students must be able to sleep, and those who want to make noise should not be allowed to do so, because you are interrupting with people's other students' sleep. So everyone should be able to sleep, and make sure that you are, uh, you are comfortable, uh, make sure that you are sleeping in a clean environment. Your bed should be clean. This time, if you have not washed your beddings, like for example, the blankets, the sheets, I want you to take time to wash them today and tomorrow so that during the exam time, you don't have a problem when you are sleeping. Remember that we say cleanliness is next to godliness. So when you are asleep and you are next to God, you are sleeping like a child, then you will be, you, information that you've studied will be able to be stored well as you sleep and then next morning you wake up and you are strong. That is the, those are the 12 hours of examination and I want you students to take this seriously and we focus on the most important things. This is the time to do to practice the Pareto principle, the 20-80% rule. There are certain things that are more important than others that this time. This, there are things that will come, will be important later. Let us focus on those things that are important now. Let's forget on those things that may be important later. And when we do that, we are going to succeed and do well. I want to wish you success in your national examination of 2021. And I believe by the end of this month, all of us will be happy that we have done well and the door, the university doors are open and the first year lecture halls will be empty and receiving us next year, 2022, to join the university. Thank you so much and may God bless you.